Greetings in the name of Christ and welcome to the Spruce Pine United Methodist Church's online connection for Sunday, January 8th, 2023. We welcome you to our service. So today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And in keeping with that, Pastor Rick is going to be talking about what does the baptism of Jesus say about us? So we ask that you center yourself, get ready for worship, and may the peace of Christ be with you. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me? Jesus answered, Allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This is the Word of God, a gift for all people. Thanks be to God. There are certain parts of our faith traditions that are particularly fascinating to me. 
They cause me to stop and think. And I usually have questions that are difficult to answer. Now, today being Baptism of the Lord Sunday brings up one of those fascinating parts of our faith traditions, Jesus' baptism. Have you ever wondered why Jesus got baptized? Given that many people believe Jesus had no need to get baptized, why did he? Did he feel the need to be forgiven or something? Or did he believe he needed to change his heart and life? Now, I've mentioned before that we people often misunderstand baptism because we look at it from a human standpoint. And there was a time when I thought that someone getting baptized had to make the decision to be baptized, that they needed to know what they were getting into, be ready, be of sound mind, and so on. But I learned a while ago from one of my divinity school professors that God is the main actor in baptism, not us. In other words, we should focus on God, not us, when it comes to baptism. And yet if we do this, it seems to make the question of why did Jesus get baptized even harder to answer. And so as we examine Jesus' baptism and our baptisms, I want to point out that although God is the main actor, the focus when it comes to baptism and everything else about our faith, today we're going to look at it from a human standpoint. Meaning, what does baptism say about who we really are? And the reason we're doing this is because for the last few weeks we've shifted our overall focus from who Jesus really is, to who we really are. Now, during Advent, we looked at how our consumer culture greatly influences us. And we can't forget that Jesus was fully God and fully human. Now, I think most of us today have no problem with the God part of Jesus. Many of us have trouble wrapping our heads around the human part. But bear in mind that Jesus encountered the same things we did, including a consumer culture, even in his time. And our consumer culture has got such a tight grip on us that it's seeped into and influences our faith as well. So, for example, when it comes to baptism, many people are fascinated by the idea of getting baptized in the Jordan River because Jesus did. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to or getting baptized in the Jordan River like Jesus did. But the area of the Jordan River where it's believed Jesus was baptized nowadays is very unsafe. It's muddy murky and full of pollution and bacteria. As such, the Israeli government has established an official Jordan River baptism spot about 65 miles away from the original site of Jesus's baptism. It's where the river is cleaner and the landscape is quite beautiful so that people can safely get baptized in the Jordan River. And if you go there, you can rent a baptismal robe, change in a clean locker room, and then step into the beautiful green water to be baptized. It's quite a memorable experience as your tour group participates with you and the fish in the river swim close to you, sometimes even nibbling at your feet. But after you're baptized, and you change out of your baptismal robe and get a shower. And as you're basking in the glory of this amazing experience, you are thrust back into the world religion of consumerism. Because at this site, there's a snack bar overlooking the river. And as you leave your Jordan River baptism experience, you have to exit through an extensive gift shop 
complete with bottles of filtered Jordan River water to take home, along with tons of other knickknacks and souvenirs. Again, there's nothing wrong with an experience like this. But Jesus didn't get baptized so that we could have a ritual to make us feel good about ourselves or even about our baptism experiences. I've mentioned before that Jesus goes into the waters of possibility in baptism to affirm that he identifies with all those who are left out, lonely, hurt, and struggling. Jesus was baptized to show us the unexpected God who comes close, who challenges us to pay attention and not always get, all, get caught up in the same ways of doing things. Jesus was baptized to show us the God who goes through incredible lengths to find us and journey with us and to reveal the heart of our Creator who says, trust me, die with me, I'll resurrect you. Jesus was baptized into our humanity so that we could be baptized into divinity, into holiness. And Jesus' baptism connects us with God's presence and promises on many levels. First, it points us to prophets like Isaiah and Elijah, who spoke about the Messiah, the Deliverer, who was to come. Even John the Baptizer, Jesus' cousin, knew that God would fulfill the promise of a deliverer. And that's why he urged people to be baptized, to be ready for when God shows up. And Jesus' baptism also points us to Moses, the deliverer of the Israelites. See, Matthew's gospel is written for a Jewish audience. And so the fact that Jesus got baptized in the Jordan River, the same river the Israelites crossed to get into the Promised Land, is significant. The Jordan River is symbolic as the crossing point of liberation, but also as an entrance into the Kingdom of God that Jesus both proclaimed and brought about. And so Jesus' baptism also reminds us of God's ever presence with us from the very beginning of creation when the Spirit, the breath of God, hovered over the waters, controlling the chaos. And just as God speaks creation into existence, God speaks of Jesus' commission to renew creation through His life, death, and resurrection. See, Jesus reveals God's higher and better ways in his, in his teachings. And He challenges us to search ourselves, to remember where we came from, to know God is always with us, and can transform our hearts and lives so that we can look more like the image after which we were created. And Jesus has a way about him that moves people not just to believe in him, but to follow him. And as we follow him, we see the meaning of life as God would have it be. We see God's purpose for our lives. We learn that our relationship with God isn't about our shortcomings, but about the better stories that are possible, the stories that are revealed to us in our baptisms. Jesus shows us that the good inside of us is God reaching out to us, awakening our souls, and helping us overcome all that's amiss inside of us and around us in the world. Jesus reminds us that we are not meant to do this life alone. We were created for community. Jesus being baptized reveals to us that salvation isn't merely an individual event or process. Our salvation is individual 
and collective. As John Wesley believed, we have a personal and a social element to our faith. See, Jesus never thought of himself as isolated or separate from others. He identified with the pain and plight of his people, the people of Israel, and all people. And Jesus was baptized into our need to change our hearts and lives so that we commit to bringing about God's ways in the here and now. And I believe a big reason Jesus was baptized was to reveal to us what we can expect after our baptisms. Because if we keep reading in Matthew's gospel, we see that immediately after his baptism, Jesus is led into the wilderness for 40 days where he undergoes trials and temptations. Now, this isn't to say that once we get baptized, we'll immediately be led into a time of trials and temptation. But Jesus' baptism marks the beginning of his earthly ministry. It marked his acceptance of God's call on his life and his willingness to live into the call to bring about God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And when we're baptized, we're freed from the chains of sin and death that mark this world. And through baptism, we're marked by God, not this world. And when we're marked by God through our baptisms, we're invited to live into the calls on our lives as people created in God's image. And when Jesus comes out of the waters of possibility in his baptism, he's different. He's changed. He sees the Holy Spirit descend upon him, and he hears God's voice speaking. And this is miraculous. But through this experience, Jesus reveals that we should also expect miraculous transformations in our lives because of our baptisms. Matthew notes that after Jesus is baptized, he's starving and wandering in the desert while being tempted into an easier kind of life and death than the one he knows is awaiting him. And as baptized followers of Jesus, we face similar temptations to be comfortable, powerful, and satisfied instead of focusing on the life of service and sacrifice God calls us to live. And baptism marks us as being set apart for a life that doesn't need to be trapped by the consumable things that the world values. Jesus teaches us to live simply and generously in a culture of excess. For us, like the rich young ruler, choosing to shift our focus away from our possessions or status or former life can be painful because our consumer culture demands that we serve ourselves. But Jesus proclaims the kingdom of God and God's justice for those who are poor, sick, imprisoned, strangers, immigrants, and those who are lost. Jesus spent time in hostile territories where he risked his reputation and his life to bring the good news of God's kingdom to those who needed it most. Jesus angered those in power because of his calls for justice and empathy towards outsiders. And so when Jesus' disciples, his followers, us, when we stand for and with those who don't have the voice or means to change their worlds, those in power might not be too happy with us either. Jesus even says, we'll be guilty by association because of our belief in him. And so baptism isn't a rite of passage or some religious ritual we do 
to give ourselves an afterlife insurance policy. Baptism helps us see things differently from God's perspective. And like Jesus, God wants us to see the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us in our lives. And baptism is our commissioning into a difficult vocation. And when we live into our calling, our vocation, lives are transformed. Yes, including our own. And our association with Jesus marks us in the eyes of the world, but it also marks us in the eyes of God. And we are those who have been created to participate with God in the renewal of God's good creation. And yet, Jesus' baptism is something that catches us off guard. You see, throughout our lives, we develop expectations about how things should be. And we can become unsettled when the unexpected happens. We don't expect the creator of the universe to show up in person. We don't expect a deliverer to be humble and care about us. We don't expect our creator to serve us. And we don't expect the teacher to be baptized by his student. So Jesus' baptism shows us who we really are. We are those who God wakes up from the sleep of complacency to see that the kingdom of heaven has come near. And his baptism prepares us to expect the unexpected in our lives as disciples, as followers of Jesus. Jesus was baptized so that we could see God's love made real in the flesh. And because Jesus was fully human, just like us, he shows us that it's possible for us to be like him. So let's see the world through the eyes of our baptisms. Let's not be stuck on things remaining the same. Amen. Thank you for connecting with us today here at Spruce Pine United Methodist Church. We hope you got a blessing from being with us today. And we hope that if you have some sort of need, whatever it is, please, please contact the church, whether it's in person or phone or email or social media. There's many ways you can connect and contact us, and we'd love to help you in any way we can. And for those, <clears throat> excuse me, for those who regularly support the, mi the mission and ministry of our church, we say thank you. And we like to say that we are in this together as a team. We cannot do this alone. And so we have four ways in which you can give financially to our church. In our in-person services, we now have our offering plates in the narthex, that's the vestibule, right outside of our sanctuary. So as we enter and exit worship, they're visual reminders that we are people who respond to God's grace and mercy. Now you can also mail your contribution to the church, and the address is 11090 Highway 226 South in Spruce Pine, North Carolina, 28777. You can also drop by your contribution during normal church office hours, which are Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Or if you'd like to do it online, you can go to sprucepineumc.org, then click the Give tab and the Donate Now, and it is a safe and secure donation site. So again, baptism shows us who we really are. People created in God's image to expect the unexpected and to make good happen in this world. So this week, let's be the good in this world. Let's look at the world through our baptisms and see what's possible. Not get stuck on the old ways, but see how God can use us to make change happen. So go in peace. Have a great week. And we hope to see you next time and connect with us again. See you next time.